Hi, I am Karthik Nandan. I am the president of the Wall Street Club of Bichpilani Hyderabad campus. Yes, uh, so the collaboration with XLR was an excellent one. We conducted a Power BI workshop with Advanced Excel over a span of three days. The workshop was almost 12 hours long uh, in total. Mr. Karthik, who was an amazing trainer, uh, helped the students understand the concepts deeply. I am sure that the students will be able to apply these concepts in their uh, careers as well as their daily lives while they try to navigate the world of finance. I am happy that we will be able to close this workshop successfully on a very good note. Hi, I am Raghunendra Singh and I am the Technical Director of the Wall Street Club at Pitspilani Hyderabad campus. Uh, it was a great amazing conducting this workshop with XLR. The trainer, Mr. Karthik, was an excellent person where he uh, explained in very detailed manner on how to give great insights using very complex data sets, which was very helpful for the people who are interested in the field of finance, business or analytics in general. Thank you. I attended a workshop conducted by CSA and ACM in collaboration with XLR. So it was a machine learning workshop. We learned a lot from the course and it was a great experience attending the workshop. The, the trainer was very helpful. He had a hands-on approach with his teaching and it was fabulous. This was a great experience for me. So I would absolutely love it if uh, XLR and its team would come again to our campus and conduct more events like this. The journey was great. Initially, uh, I thought that uh, I was not proficient enough in it. But later I came to know there was no prerequisites for it and then I applied for it and it was a great course and it started from basics and took me to a great extent. Good evening, myself Kavya Ganatra. I am from Computer Science Association. I was the POC for this ML workshop conducted by CSA and ACM in collaboration with Excella. The experience of the workshop was uh, really nice. The feedback from all the students was positive. They understood the concept. The workshop was also practical based with some questions. The experience with XLR was uh, very smooth. They helped us in conducting the workshop smoothly right from the booking of the vendor and deciding the course till the distribution of certificates. In overall, this workshop was a success during our technical phase Atmos. And I thank XLR for being a part of it. Thank you. My name is Tasneem. I am the senior manager at 98% Tile in the HR department. 
and uh, today we did a wonderful drive with XLR. Uh, it was amazing right from the very beginning, from the uh, very first day when I got in touch with them till today. I think it was an extremely smooth journey with them. There were multiple follow-ups done by the representatives in order to check that we would be, uh, what time would we would be coming, how many people would be coming, what vehicle we would get. To that extent, they were so precise in giving all the information to us. It was extremely uh, great to get associated with them and uh, have a drive at uh, XLR campus. So we are very, very uh, happy that uh, we got a chance to do this. Now, coming to the students, uh, what uh, XLR had, I think they were extremely enthusiastic. They were well prepared. They were aware of what we are, they are coming for. I think uh, there was some back in preparation, which they did that was commendable. They also were very confident and they were open to any kind of, you know, thing we were asking them to do. That was the, I think the best part. Now, uh, I really hope we have a very, very fruitful association with each one of them and XLR in future. We are really looking forward to have many more drives like this. Hi everyone, my name is Prachi Sharma and I am the Senior Project Manager for IT Department at 90th Percentile. So today we were here for this uh, IT Bootcamp, right, this uh, technical drive and uh, at XLR. So it was a great experience and uh, I would feel that uh, the students, they, they are the freshers, right, but it doesn't seem like that. So if I talk about their technical and cognitive ability, they all seem pretty good in that and uh, that's what I felt and I guess uh, they have been taught pretty well in XLR so that's how they have performed uh, good in their aptitude and the technical tests so I wish them very all the best and it was a very great experience over here Technology Consulting Manager from 98th Percentile. We visited XLR for the campus placement drive and it went very well today. Uh, Miss Ambika, Miss Pragati, everyone received us greatly here and we had a lot of uh, enjoyable time here. The students had great experience with us. They were interactive, they had good aptitude and all the technological skills they showed. I think it, they were all well and we really appreciate their uh, time that they spared to us and I think we will be doing a great job. Uh, we are expecting a lot of people to be hired from them. Let's see. It was a great experience altogether. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I think from entering into the cyber tower to exiting out of this tower, the XLR team has been received, uh, received me with such a care and pleasure. I am the part of this XLR since four months. From the third month itself, they have uh, conducted the placement sessions uh, from the third month itself and this is the fourth month and this is the 98th percentile is one of the placement drive I, I have attended so far. And the, uh, attending to this drive is such a good experience for me. All the HR team, HRs and the team uh, made us feel very comfortable and confident. XLR helped me a lot and I, I experienced a lot of things today. So I am really to hope to be I placed in that company. I am confident about that. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So, dear madam and sir, uh, still uh, people are joining. We'll wait for uh, uh, two minutes or so. After that, uh, we'll start the session. Okay.
माय नेम इज राहुल होलकर आई एम बीइंग वर्किंग एज अ सीनियर आर्किटेक्ट इन यूरिक सिस्टम्स सो टुडे वी आर वी आर हियर एट एक्सला सिस्टम्स फॉर द प्लेसमेंट ड्राइव एंड आई रियली एप्रिशिएट द द प्लेसमेंट सर्विसेज दैट आई मीन द द टीम दैट आई एक्चुअली मेट we really got a good service and uh, hospital service actually they and they the way they actually welcome is really fantastic and i love uh, this is actually my one of the best experience that i have ever and uh, yeah the end up out the student quality uh, today actually we had a interviews with us to almost like 25 to 30 students but the candidates are really good i mean with respect to knowledge with respect to communication i mean they are much so more familiar about the technologies most of interviews we had in java and uh, the students are really fantastic thank you i am hari prasad bhugate so today we have come here on the behalf of urex systems and uh, so we are conducting a drive uh, at xlr the students here they are also you know we found them very confident thank you hello everyone my name is mayuri pimple i have completed my uh, full stack development course from the xlr edtech private limited the xlr is doing the fantastic job the xlr placement team is doing the excellent work and they are also providing the stp session that boost our confidence at the next level i would like to thank the whole training and placement team of the xlr for arranging the drive at the xlr pune office thank you hi everyone my name is sunita joshi i am from pune i have completed my full stack development course uh, from xlr the training provided by the xlr was very fantastic the placement was provided are also good uh, there are the various sdp sessions was conducted um, at xlr office so that a uh, student can uh, enhance their skill and knowledge uh, and crack the interview and boost our knowledge to the next level uh, hello everyone my name is omkar sarve i have completed full stack developer course uh, from xlr edtech private limited the training provided by xlr is uh, flawless they provide good placement support they doing stp sessions regularly to boost our uh, confidence to the next level i would like to thank whole uh, xlr team to arrange the campus drive at yeah jay sir you can take over the session okay thank you uh, let me share this just am i audible is audio fine yes sir oh. audible yeah. okay good afternoon all so welcome to day 2 i hope uh, you have enjoyed the day 1 uh, for the day 1 we have discuss uh, introduction to the business analytics and the types of the uh, analytics that is descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive now today uh, we will discuss the data management or the data in uh, business analytics we will try to explore what is data what are the different uh, types of data then the uh, we are going to focus on the fundamentals of uh, database system and also uh, today we will uh, uh, go more practically or we will try to have few hands on also i will be explaining those and the files will be shared at the end of the session so let's start okay what is a data in general uh, if you uh, observe data is nothing but the facts figures or the details that are collected for reference or analysis so using the data we will uh, we will able to get the actionable insights we will able to analyze it to make the better decisions but from the point of view of business analytics what is a data it is a raw information which is collected by the organization uh, that information within the uh, maybe related with within the organization or that will be outside the organization so what kind of data it will be it will be sales number customer feedback uh, production cost market trends now this data is uh, very useful for businesses because they are going to analyze this data in order to take the future decisions 
in order to make the changes or in order to reach the targets. So data is going to serve as a foundation for generating the actionable insights that inform the business decisions. In the uh, uh, simple way, we can say that, uh, think of it like gathering the pieces of puzzle. And when we are going to put all the puzzles, uh, the pieces of puzzle together, you will get a clear picture how that data is going to help us. So once we understood the data, the next thing is, what are the different types of data that is collected by the organization or businesses? So there are four, uh, there are, sorry, there are five uh, categories. Broadly, we can classify the data as a structured, unstructured, semi-structured, time series, and the big data. In today's session, we will be more focusing on structured data. But I will brief you regarding the all the five types. Now, uh, why it is important to understand the data? Because once we understood the data, we will able to analyze it, we will able to process it, we will able to store it in a better way. That's the reason understanding the data type is very important. So let's take a scenario in order to understand the different data types. In the world of data, imagine two sections of library. One is well-organized. In the well-organized library, the books are sorted by the categories, author, title. That represents a structured data. So it will be very easy to access the data, to manage the data, or uh, uh, to analyze the data. Whereas the other section is uh, a mix of uh, handwritten notes, photographs, videos, audio recordings. That is nothing but the unstructured data. There are common challenges with the unstructured data. It is difficult to analyze it or it is difficult to manage it. Why is it so? Because it is a mix of handwritten notes, photographs, videos, or audios. That is the example I have given you. But uh, if you consider the different types of unstructured data, I can give you one uh, simple example that is uh, a social media post. So let me share that example. You will get to know uh, what uh, I'm trying to convey. Let me finish this. Unstructured data lacks a predefined format or the organization, which is making it complex to analyze. Let me give you one simple example. Let's focus on this uh, tweet. Just visited a uh, city cafe for the first time. Love the cozy atmosphere and the caramel latte. Highly recommended city cafe. Now, if you observe in this tweet, there is a text, hashtag, image, and a link. Now, it doesn't fit into uh, any organized table. So this type of data is very useful. There, there are, we can get the actionable insight, but in order to process it, it is difficult. Whereas, if you focus on the structured data type, in the structured data type, you will observe it in an organized manner. So it is highly organized, which makes it easily searchable in the database. Easy to manage, easy to process. Let me give you one example. Consider a customer a database in a retail store. So there will be different or the specific columns in which the customer database is available. So what are the examples we can consider? The customer ID, name, address, phone number, and the email address. So this is a type of a structured data. Structured data can be stored in, in the form of table, rows and the columns. Whereas the unstructured data, it is difficult to manage it. It is difficult to process it. Let me give you a few more examples for structured and the unstructured data. As I, write, as I mentioned earlier, structured data fits neatly into tables like an Excel spreadsheet. So what are the examples? Customer information stored in the uh, CRM system. Financial data which includes sales, expenses, statements, 
operational data uh, cost uh, covers inventory uh, supply chain and the production whereas for the unstructured data which is not going to fit into the uh, uh, regular uh, 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 organized form so the examples are emails and the text documents uh, social media posts which we have discussed images and the videos but please note unstructured data is also very important we need to analyze it but for that we need to uh, go for the advanced techniques or the advanced software is there any question okay there is no question i hope you clearly understood structured data and the unstructured data now let me uh, share the third type of data that is a semi structure in the semi structure you will observe a mix of organized and the flexible data what is the advantage of a semi structure it is more easier uh, than the unstructured data we can consider this as a, a mix between neatly organized uh, filling cabinet and a box of assorted atoms where everything has a label one important point here for the semi structured data let me highlight the same it has a tags or markers to help uh, identify the parts of the data in the semi structured data i told you or i have shared that it is a mix of organized and the flexible data also one important thing tags and markers to help identify parts of the data what are the examples we can consider the first example as a xml file these are like instruction manuals that use the tags to organize and label the information then there are json files they are structured like to do list with the atoms and the details commonly used for sending data over the internet and as compared with the unstructured data it is easy to analyze the semi structured data this is our third type the first one structured second one unstructured the third one semi structured now let me share the next one next one is the time series data it is easy to understand time series data in the time series data you will observe the events uh, obtained over a regular time interval or the sequence of values uh, over a regular time interval what are the examples sales data over a time tracking sales performance across a uh, different time period then the website uh, traffic statistics analyzing the visitor trends to company's website over a time that includes the time series data now why the time series data is important using the time series data we will be able to identify the seasonal trends forecasting demand planning inventory so these are the three important uh, benefits seasonal trends forecasting demand and planning inventory so this is our uh, fourth type time series data then there is a one more left so i'm just going to briefly explain that that is a big data big data uh, refers to the extremely large data set in which you will have a structured data also unstructured also and the semi structured also in the big data please note structured unstructured and the semi structured data will be there there are three important characteristics volume so you can imagine a giant ocean of data so it, the data will be very large velocity this data will be collected at a faster speed data is rushing like a cars on a super fast highway constantly and quickly then the variety it's like a huge buffet with all kinds of dishes because i mentioned here structured unstructured and the semi structured so in order to analyze the uh, big data we need to use the uh, advanced uh, Uh, tools and the technology but please note big data uh, is very useful in order to make the uh, better decisions or it will give us the actionable insights so we are uh, going to limit our discussion to structured data
I hope uh, everybody understood the five types. Is there any question? So I have explained the five types, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, time series, and then the big data. Okay, so if there is no question, let's go to the next slide. Now, where we are going to store the data or where we are going to organize the data? That is our database. Database is our go-to digital space for storing, organizing, and finding all kinds of information quickly. I will give you two examples. Uh, let's consider uh, that... Uh, uh, the playlist in our uh, smartphone. We can consider it as a database because uh, in the playlist, you will observe the different variety of songs. One more example, when we are going to upload a photo on the social media account, the photo gallery is our uh, database. So basically, database is a structured collection of data which can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. So once we have uh, stored the data, we can access it, we can manage it, we can update it also. And as I mentioned, we will be discussing more the structured data. The structured data can be stored in the form of table, that is rows and the columns. So there are two types of databases. I will be more focusing on the relational database. Relational database is going to uh, save the data in the form of table, that is rows and the columns. What are the examples? MySQL is there, PostgreSQL is there, Oracle is there, or the SQL server is there. So for the no, no SQL database, it's like a big room where you can uh, uh, save the different kind of data. So uh, you can save images, you can save the videos, uh, we can save the... Uh, uh, pictures, the data which cannot be stored in the form of table, we can be stored in the NoSQL database. So what is the example? Example, we can consider the MongoDB. Let me see if there is a question. Uh, I will discuss that, okay? Let's focus on structured data. For unstructured data, uh, we need to go into more details. So I will share at the end of the session. Okay, one more important thing. Relational databases are structured and uh, transactional uh, transaction focus, perfect for complex interrelated data needs. Whereas the no SQL databases offer flexibility. Why it is mentioned uh, offers flexibility? Because uh, we can uh, save uh, the, a different kind of data, that is the data in the form of images, videos, or the pictures, catering to large, diverse data sets and the rapid development. So let's focus more on the relational database. So there is a comparison also given. Now this will give, give us the overview. Okay, let's focus on the overview of the comparison between the structured and the unstructured data. The first point, can we display in rows and columns relational database? I told you the structured data can be stored in the form of a table. Whereas unstructured data cannot be, uh, for, cannot be stored in the form of table, but uh, it, it includes uh, the different types of images, audio, video, uh, word processing file, emails, spreadsheet. That is the advantage. More flexibility is there. In this case, you will have numbers, uh, dates, and the strings. Then the, uh, there is one analysis given by the Gartner. Uh, estimated 20% of enterprise data. Estimated 80% of the enterprise data. So, as I mentioned previously, unstructured data is very important. It is difficult to analyze but it is going to give us the 80% of the enterprise data. 
for relational database requires a less storage whereas for the unstructured requires more storage the relational database easy to manage easy to update easy to access whereas unstructured uh, data uh, base of the data uh, data more difficult to manage and protect with the legacy solutions. We need to go for the advanced uh, tool center techniques. I hope you all understood this comparison clearly. Then the next question comes, what are the advantages of the database? We understood that the database uh, we are going to use for uh, storing, accessing, managing, and updating the data. What are the other advantages? It will help us to stay organized, keep all our information tidy and in one place. We will be able to uh, find the things quickly. We will be able to access the database uh, easily. And the third important point, that is the information it will help us to keep the information safe because uh, the people who are going to have access, only they are going to view the data, they are going to update the data. So that point is uh, very important if you want to keep our uh, data uh, safe. So there are three advantages I have shared. Stay organized, find things quickly and keep information safe. Let's go to the next point. Now next, I'm going to discuss how we are going to communicate with the database. Or how do we use the database? So in order to talk to the database, we are going to use a special language that is a structured query language. So an example I have uh, given here. Hey database, can you show me all the sales from the last month? The database understands and shows you exactly what you ask for. So using this uh, special language, we are going to communicate with the database. That is structured query language. And we are going to see a few practical examples also today. We are going to see a few hands-on also. Now it is important that uh, we keep the database uh, happy. So how we are going to keep the database happy? Organizing data. Ensure that the reliable, accurate data is stored uh, in the database. Update the information, keeping everything current and accurate. Then protecting the data. So it is very important that those who know how to manage database, they should only get the access, the complete access. That is the right people can open the database, they can manage the database, they can update the database. If uh, it is not uh, done properly, then there is a possibility that we will lose our uh, data because uh, data is a very valuable uh, thing and uh, managing the database needs skills. Now, next point. Vedant, is it fine if we take the questions at the end of the session? Now the next thing, is it possible uh, to store the data directly into the uh, database that is relational database or we need to do some processing? What do you think? Anybody? Can we store data directly to the database or we need to process it? Anybody, we can, you can use, uh, uh, please, uh, please put the answer in the chat box also. You can use the chat box. Question is very simple. Can we directly save? Yes, very good. It needs to be processed. We cannot save directly data into the database. We need to uh, process the data. When, may, when I say process the data, we need to clean and prepare the data. So which tool we are going to use for cleaning or preparing the data? We are going to use the Excel. There are other tools also. We will go with the basics. We can use the Excel in order to uh, clean and prepare the data. And then we are going to store it into the SQL database. SQL database 
that is the relational database in which the data will be stored in the form of a table, rows and the columns. Now, the processing of uh, data depends upon different factors, such as uh, sources of data, its format, the structure of the database, and uh, for what purpose we are going to use it. So for today's session, I have covered a few uh, basic uh, data cleaning uh, and preparation techniques, which I'm going to share with you. Okay, cleaning data in Excel. So what are the uh, different uh, um, options we have? Removing duplicates, uh, removing duplicates, correcting errors, formatting data, uh, handling missing values, uh, filtering and uh, sorting, and the uh, data validation. So one by one, I'm going to explain. First one, sort and uh, filter. What is the importance of the function sort and the filter? The sort and filter functionalities are available in Excel in order to uh, filter the data for further analysis. So let's focus on this data. We have a table, date, product ID, product name, category, region, and the total cell. Let's sort the first one we are going to discuss. Let's sort the data set by total cell column in a descending order to quickly see the top selling product. I will again repeat. We are going to sort the data by total cell column in descending order to quickly see the top selling product. And there is one more uh, objective we have. Filter the data set. Uh, filter the data set to show only the rows where the category is gadgets. So let me share this in the Excel. Okay, you are able to see the Excel file. Can somebody confirm? Uh, whether you are able to see the Excel file. Uh, why is it so? Let's confirm now. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, so what was our objective? We want to uh, sort the data uh, for the column to total cell in a descending order. So let's go to the data. This is a uh, Excel. So we will go to the data. In the data, here is the option sort. So you select the column. Now there will be options. Expand the selection, continue with the current selection. So we want to sort the total data. So I will just expand this. Let me select it completely. Okay, now please observe here. We want to uh, sort the data in the descending order. So what I need to do here, I will go for a second option and then I will click on this. So you will observe that uh, we got the data in the descending order. So which product uh, is uh, most selling, that is uh, gadgets. The total sale is $300. So this is the first functionality, sorting the data. I hope everybody understood this. Is there any question for uh, data sorting? I will go slowly so that you will be able to understand. These are basics, but please tell me uh, if there is any doubt. Okay, good, good. Next objective. Next objective was uh, uh, to filter the data by gadgets. So what we are going to do, we will again select the data. You go to data and here you will observe the filter option. Click on the filter. Now we want to filter by gadgets. 
So you are just going to select the gadget. So you will get the data for the gadget. Who said no, sir? You want me to repeat? Who want me to repeat the data sorting? It's very simple, right? So you go to data. There are two options. Let me highlight this. This is the sort one. Here you are able to see the sort option and uh, uh, beside this, there is a filter option. Understood? Can we go to the next one? I have explained how to sort the data and how to filter the data. Okay, good. Okay, these are the results we will get once we sort the data and uh, filter the data. Let's discuss the next one. Next one is group by and uh, ungroup. So group by and ungroup uh, will uh, help us to collapse or expand the rows with a similar content. So one example is given. This is the data set we have. Let's uh, first observe the data set. What is given here? We have uh, items, month, and the quantity. We are going to see how to use group by and ungroup in the Excel. I hope you all are able to see the Excel file. Okay. Now uh, we can do the grouping uh, by rows and the columns also. So let me share how you can do. First, you select like which group you want to create. So let's say we want to create a group for mouse. The item type is the mouse. You will go to data. In data, you will go to group. I will just click on the group. So there will be two options, whether you want to group by rows or the column. So I want to group by rows. So I will just click on this. Then if you click uh, on this uh, minus, so it will uh, minimize the mouse. Let's uh, consider one more example. We want to group the UPS also. So you just select this. Then again, you click on group. And you can uh, click on this. So it will uh, uh, make the group of uh, the UPS. If you click on this, again, you will be able to see. If you click on this, again, you will be able to see the mouse. Now, if you want to remove this uh, grouping, then again, you select this and uh, click on ungroup. So if you want to remove this, how we can do? So just select this and you go to the ungroup. So it will remove the grouping. I will do the similar thing for the UPS also. Okay, there is a one more important feature. If you want to get the total of mouse, keyboard, UPS, how we can do that? There is one option that is a subtotal. So you just select this table and click on the subtotal. Click on OK. Now you just minimize this. So if you observe here, you will get the mouse total, you will get the keyboard total, you will get the UPS total also. I need to expand this. You will get the UPS total and the SMPS total also. So how we got this? We have used the subtotal. I hope everybody understood this. Is there any doubt for group and group and the subtotal? Am I audible?
Em em Okay, we are good to go. Am I audible? Okay, good. Okay, now let me explain the next one. So we are done with the group, ungroup, and the subtotal. Okay, next one. Next one is text to column. It converts raw text into the uh, columns in Excel. Now look at this data. Uh, the data is uh, given in one uh, column only. So there is a number, then the name, uh, like which department is there, and there is again one number. If you want to uh, separate this, or if you want to have it in a different column, then how we can get it? We are going to use text to column feature. So let me explain this, how we can uh, convert this to text to the column. Again, we will go to the Excel file. So this is in the uh, first column, but we want to uh, get into the different columns. So you select this. You click on a uh, text to column where I will get the text to column option data in data. There will be text to column. Click on text to column. Okay. There will be two options delimited and the fixed width. So we will go with the first option delimited. We can uh, see there is a, uh, a dash also small dash. So we are going to use that in order to get them into the different columns. Click on next. Then you put here separate using the dash. There are other options also. Semicolon is there, comma is there, space is there. You will able to see how the uh, columns are going to create. So we will have number, uh, name, a department, and then again there is one number. Then you click on next and the finish. So you will able to see from the single column, we got uh, five columns. So it is separated now. Number, name, department, and again, there is one number. So this is a very useful text to column. Understood this? Okay, uh, let me explain one more time. We have a data in a single column. We want to separate it into the different columns because this data will be difficult to analyze. So what we are going to do, we will go to the data in data text to columns. Text to columns, there are uh, two options, delimited characters such as a comma, comma, tab, separate each field, or the fixed width. Fields are aligned in columns with the spaces between the each field. So I'm going to use the first one, delimited. Then there is a tab, semicolon, comma, space, other. So I'm going to put here dash. I will uh, I, I will able to see also how the data is going to get uh, separated, data preview. And then you are going to click on next and finish. So from the single column, uh, we got the five columns. Now it is easy to analyze also. So if you want to arrange, them, arrange this into ascending or descending order, again, you can go to the sort and you can click on this ascending or the descending order. So that we have discussed the sorting. Here you need to select which uh, uh, column you want to sort. Like let's say I want to sort E, smallest to largest. Then I will click on OK. Again, I will explain this. You go to the sort. The uh, first one is the sort by. So which column do you want to sort? So we have selected E. Let's say you want to sort the column E. So I will just click on column E. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, got it. Then, uh, smallest to largest. It is already there. So, we'll do largest to small. And then you click on OK. So, you will be able to see the values are now from largest to small. So, that is the importance of text to follow. Understood? Is there any doubt for text to column? Okay, good. good. Now let's uh, go to the next one. Next one is the remove uh, duplicates. So it is going to eliminate the duplicate entries. Uh, this is the data we have. So in this data, you will observe uh, there are a few duplicate values. So uh, focus on this uh, Jane Smith. So this is uh, repeated. Now, how we are going to remove this? Let's go to the Excel. Now here, uh, one challenge we have, that is it is given in the uh, single column. First, we, we are going to use text to column. Because uh, if you want to remove the duplicates, uh, we will first try to separate it and then we will use the remove duplicates. So you just click on text to column. Now for text to column, uh, there is a, width, a fixed width between the uh, characters. So we will go for the second option, fixed width. Fields are aligned in columns with spaces between each field. You click on next, next, and then finish. So you will get the five different columns. Now you just select this. So there are 10 uh, rows we have and you click on remove duplicates. Okay. Why is it showing no duplicate value? Let me check this. Okay, now it is working. So uh, it is observed that there is a one duplicate value removed, eight unique values remain. Now, uh, uh, please note that the initial value will be retained and the next duplicate value will be removed. So you just click on OK. So that uh, for the J, uh, we have only one entry. Yes, yes, I, I deleted that serial number. I deleted as there is. Good. I hope you understood this. First, we have used the text to column because it was given in the single column. And then we have used remove duplicates. So what are the uh, data cleaning or the data preparation uh, methods we have learned? Sort and filter, group and ungroup, then the subtotal, then text to column, and remove duplicates. There is a one more which I'm going to discuss in today's session. That is a data validation. Let me first explain this data validation and then we will see how we are going to use it in the Excel. Data validation uh, is going to help us to restrict the entries which are out of a data set or which we don't want. Or it will uh, uh, help us to ensure the data integrity. So data validation is, validation is going to help us to ensure the data integrity by restricting the type of data or the values uh, that we don't want to have in our data set. So let's see with one example how we are going to use the data validation feature. Very important in Excel data validation. 
Okay, one simple example is given here. Let's say uh, we have this data A, B, C, and D. The values are 10, 15, 12, and 14. So how we can use the data validation? Let's say our uh, minimum value is 5 and the maximum value is 20. And we don't want values uh, um, other than this, 5 and the 20. Values should be between 5 and 20. So how we can use the data validation? You click on data validation. So there will be different options. Allow any value, whole number, decimal, list, date, a uh, time, timeline, custom. So I'm going to use here whole number. I told you, I, uh, I mentioned that we will have values between 5 and 20. So data is between. So minimum is 5, maximum is 20. You click on OK. We can put the input message also. So we, we will put here values uh, uh, between 5 and 20. We can have an error uh, message also. Error message uh, value out of range. And then you click on OK. Now let me try to enter here 20. Or even if I put 2 here also, what it is uh, showing me? The value does not match the data validation restriction defined for the sale. So I will not able to enter any other value because I need to enter between 5 and 20. So let me share one more time. Let's say if I enter here 22. So it will not allow me to enter the 22 value. The value doesn't match the data validation restriction defined for the sale. I hope uh, everybody understood this. If you want me to repeat, I can uh, repeat the same. Understood this? Okay, okay, no problem, I will repeat, okay. First, what we will do, we will uh, remove the uh, data validation. Just go to this. Clear all. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to put here values between 5 and 20 only. Click on the data, then you go to data validation, select whole number. There are the other options also. You can use this for different uh, purposes also, like decimal, list, date, type, text length, custom. So I have selected your whole number between 5 and 20. Then the input message is there, error alert is there. You just click on OK. So data validation is applied here. Now if I want to put here 23, it will not allow me to put a 23. This value doesn't match the data validation restriction defined for the same. So in this way, we can protect uh, our data. Good. Okay, so these are the uh, different uh, uh, data cleaning or the data preparation techniques we have discussed. So what are the different uh, methods I have uh, shared? Sort and filter, group and ungroup, text to column, remove duplicates, uh, data validation. There is a uh, one more, uh, you can go to the formulas also and the text, in the text, uh, if there is, there is any uh, error or if there are any gaps uh, in the uh, email ID or the names, you can use uh, trim function, you can use the proper function. So there is a lot to explore, but I have shared the basic one and the important one. Okay, once our uh, data is ready, now what is the next step? Once our data is clean, and uh, prepared, what is the next step? Next step, how to uh, save data from Excel to SQL. So we can, uh, the first option we have, we can export uh, as a CSV file, comma separated file, comma separated values, saving the clean Excel file as a CSV, 
which can be imported into the SQL database. There is one more option using the database tools. Many database systems like uh, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, they are going to have built-in tools like SQL Server Integration Service that can import the data directly from the Excel. So two options are there. You can export as a CSV or using the uh, database tools. Now we will see once the database is created in SQL, what are the uh, queries we can execute or how we can access that data, how we can update that data. So first we have discussed how to clean or prepare data in Excel. Now from Excel, we are going into the SQL. We will see how to uh, access the data, how to update the data in the SQL database. Okay, so for today's session, we are going to use the SQL Lite. It is a software library that provides a relational database management system. You can go for MySQL also, but initially, if you want to uh, learn the basic queries, I will recommend you go with the SQL Lite. Lite, uh, uh, what does it mean? So it is a uh, lightweight in terms of center database administration or in a simple way I can say that it is easy to set up and easy to operate also. So what are the important features self-contained, serverless, uh, zero configuration and a transactional. So uh, the transactional that is you able to exhibit different queries. And uh, we already discussed that SQL is a structured query language, programming language, uh, which we are going to use in order to communicate with the relational database. So I'm going to share one scenario with you, and we are going to discuss the same. Okay, let's uh, look at the sample database. Uh, so this is our sample database in the SQL light. That is the tracks table. What are the columns we have? Track ID, name, album ID, media, uh, genera, composer, millisecond, bytes, and the unit price. Am I audible? Is uh... Okay, good, good. Okay, so uh, we are going to consider uh, this database in which uh, we are going to focus on the tracks table. In the tracks table, I have explained what are the columns we have. So we will see how we are going to access this data, how we are going to execute the different queries. So this is the SQL Lite uh, software library. And on the left hand side, you will see the uh, database. This is our uh, database. Here we are going to execute the queries in the query section. And where I will get the results, I will get the results uh, here. I'm going to share the document with you, how to install this, what are the important uh, uh, SQL queries. As of now, you just focus on uh, how we are going to run the queries. On the left hand side, uh, database is there. We are going to execute the query in the query section and you will get the results uh, in the build. So let's focus on the basic SQL queries. The first one, how to select uh, uh, data from all columns or how to select data from the specific column. If you want to select data from the all columns, go for select star uh, form. Select star. This is the SQL uh, query. And uh, if you want to uh, uh, select the data from the specific column, just go with the select. When there is a star, we are going to get the data from all columns, 
without star, we will get the data from the specific column. Let me share the example. Now this data we are going to see in the uh, software library. So what is the command I'm going to use? SQL star from tracks. The syntax is very important. I will just paste this here. So what is our query? Select star from tracks. Here is the option to run. So I'm going to execute this query. Okay, so you will be able to see uh, the data from the track tip. Track ID, name, album ID, album ID uh, then the generic composer. If you go to the side, you will get more details. Just give me a second. I need, I need to switch my internet connection. It's fluctuating just a minute. Okay, is it fine now? You are able to hear me? Uh, please, somebody confirm. I'm audible. Okay, good, good. Okay. So the first SQL uh, command which we have learned, that is the select star, which will give me the data from the all the columns. So you will be able to see all the columns uh, from the tracks. Now, uh, let's execute the second one. So let's say uh, I, I want to uh, get the specific data. So I just want, uh, uh, let me share that. I just want a track ID, name, and the composer from the tracks. So how we are going to execute the same. Let me share this. Okay, I will again explain what we are trying to get. We are trying to get the track ID name composer from uh, where we are we are getting this data from the tracks only three details track id name and the composer so you paste this uh, query or you write down the query and then click on uh, run So it will give us the only three that is track ID, name, and the composer. Okay. Good. So you are able to see uh, the three columns that is the track ID, name, and the composer. Understood this? Uh, not able to. Is it fine now? Is audio fine now? I have explained only two queries. The first one is the select star 
using the select star, you will get the data from all the columns. If you want the specific data, let's say I just want the track ID. So you just remove the other columns and you try to execute this. Okay, good. Okay, uh, can somebody tell me why we are getting this error? I just want to track ID. So please ensure that the there is a no uh, syntax error. So why we got syntax error? If I put here comma, uh, this query will not run. It will show me the error. So I just need to remove this. And how you will get to know the different syntax? Uh, with the practice, uh, you will get to know the syntax. So I just need to remove this and I will just execute this. Now it will give me only the details regarding the track ID. So select star will give me the data from all columns. And if I want to uh, go for a specific column, then I will uh, select and then I will put the column name. So any doubt for these two queries? Once you understood, we will go for the next one. Yes, comma was the problem. Comma uh, uh, was giving us the syntax error. Okay, good. Next one. Let me share the next one. Next one, uh, sorting the data. When I say sorting the data, how to sort the data in the ascending and the descending order? Again, we are going to use the same uh, uh, database or the same table that is our tracks table. And we will see how we are going to uh, arrange this in the ascending or the descending order. So let me use this. Uh, SQL query, I will explain this and then uh, we will execute the same. Okay, what we are trying to do here. Select album ID from tracks. Let me take it down. Select album ID from the tracks. And we are going to order by alum, uh, um, album ID in the ascending order. ASC is for the ascending order. And you just uh, click on run. Let's see what we get. So if I go, if I scroll down, it will be increasing in the understood this. So what we have done, we have selected the album ID from the tracks. But again, one more uh, SQL query we have executed that is order by order by album ID in the ascending order. How I will get to know how many rows are there? You will able to see the total rows. Three, five, zero. Understood this? Let's say if I remove the uh, uh, ascending order, what I predict. Uh, let me again go back. So, Okay, uh, there is one more uh, option. Even if you are not going to put the ASC, the default, uh, it will uh, arrange the data in the ascending order. Let me share this one more time. I'm just going to remove the ASC now. 
and we will see how the uh, data or uh, what is the result we will get. Album ID from the tracks order by. I'm going to uh, remove this ASC and you try to execute this. So by default, if we use the order by, it is going to arrange the data in the ascending order. So we have two options, directly use the order by or you put a, D, a, a ASC, that is the ascending order. Now let's uh, see uh, what result we will get for the descending order. For the descending order, we need to put DSC. So let me uh, run this query. What we are trying to do, we will select album ID from the tracks, order by album ID, but this time we want a uh, descending order. So you just uh, run this query. So you will able to see it is a descending order, 347, 346, 345. Understood ascending and descending. Please let me know if there is a doubt. The first one I have explained how you are going to select. And then the second one, how you are going to uh, sort the data, ascending and the descending. Is there any doubt? Okay, okay, good, good. So we will go for the next one. Let me share the next one. Next one, we are going to uh, discuss uh, the select listing. So the select listing will help us to remove the duplicate rows uh, in the database. So what is the uh, database we are going to use or the table we are going to use here? The customer table we will focus. Now let's try to execute the select distinct uh, on the customer's tables. The first SQL query I will uh, use that is the select star from the customers. So let me run this query. I'm using select star from customers. So it will show me all the uh, columns for the customer table. I will just uh, run this. So you will be able to see all the columns from the uh, customer table. Customer, first name, last name. If you want to uh, uh, get only the first name, what we can do. So you just remove the from and uh, you need to put the first name here. and ensure that uh, uh, there is a no uh, error in the syntax. You try to run this, so you will get the first name. But we want to know uh, the distinct one. So let me share how to select a distinct. First, I will show all the entries and then we will go for the distinct. We are going to select CT from the customers. Let's select CT from customers and we are going to order by uh, CT. So can you tell me uh, if I use order by, it will order in the ascending or the descending? We have not put any ASC or DESC. By default, a ascending order, yes. yes. 
by default it is accepting out. Let's try to execute this query. Okay, good. So how many entries we have? Total entries are 59 and you will able to see the uh, ascending. So let me scroll down. These are the total entries for CT. But in this case, yes, yes, it's alphabetical order, correct. In this case, uh, we only want a distinct one. Total rows are 59. So how to get a distinct one? Distinct one that we are trying to remove the duplicates. So let me uh, execute the query for the same. I will explain first and then I will explain. Select, we are going to use distinct CT from where customers and then order by CT. So it will uh, arrange the, uh, in the alphabetical order. Select distinct CT from customers order by CT. Initially, total rows are 59. Now let's see if you run this query, uh, what is the result we are going to get. So now total rows are 53 and you will see it is alphabetically arranged. So the duplicate entries are removed. Understood this? How many duplicate entries uh, are there? Initially it was 59, right? I hope uh, everybody understood this, how to select a distinct. Is it clear? Good, good, okay. Now, uh, let's move to the next one. So we have uh, discussed the select star, select order by. Now the next one I'm going to discuss. How to filter the data in SQL? We are going to use the where. Where is going to, uh, where will help us to filter the data with the specific conditions. Then and uh, if we are going to combine the two conditions for filtering and the like. Uh, pattern match, like is used for uh, matching the pattern. So let's uh, use the again the uh, tracks uh, table and from the tracks table, we will try to execute where, and, and the like. So first let me explain how we can get the total uh, columns for the tracks. We are going to run this query, select star from the tracks. When I'm going to run this, I will get the uh, total uh, columns. Now here we are going to use the uh, filtering condition. So what will be our filtering condition? Let's try to get the data where album ID is one. What is our filtering condition? Let me share this. What are the details we are trying to fetch? We want name. We want uh, how many milliseconds uh, that track, then the bytes, album ID from tracks. But what is our filtering condition? We want this data only when the album ID is one. So let's try to execute this query. So for the album ID one, what I will get name, millisecond, bytes from the tracks uh, table. So let's run this. Okay, good. So we got the same name, uh, millisecond, bytes and the album ID. So this is our filtering condition. We have used where album ID is equal to one. I hope everybody understood this. Is it clear? Okay, good, good. So what we are uh, trying to learn here, how to access the uh, database, how to apply the different queries or how to execute the different queries. Then uh, the next one, how to use the and. Let's say I have uh, two filtering conditions. So let me uh, first explain this and then we will execute the query.
we are going to select name milliseconds bytes album id from the tracks table but there is a specific condition where album id is 1 and the milliseconds is uh, greater than 25000 so there are two filtering conditions album id and the milliseconds so let's see what result we will get we are going to execute this let me remove this and this okay now you'll observe here that for these four entries milliseconds are uh, greater as mentioned uh, in our condition and the album id is one so if there is a more than one filtering condition, you will go for add. If only one condition is there, you will just put a where album ID is one. Understood this? Is there any doubt? Okay, okay, good, good. Now the next one. If you want to uh, uh, run the query uh, in order to uh, have a pattern match or for a, a particular uh, criteria, so we can go for like also. How the like is going to help us? Let me explain. And then we will run the query. Again, we are going to select the name, album ID, composer from the tracks, where, where composer like the Smith order by album ID. Now, what are the conditions we are using? Where, that is our filtering condition, but it should give us uh, results only for Smith and order by album ID order uh, by album ID that is in the ascending order. So let's try to execute this and we will see what is the result we get. Okay, now uh, please observe here. When, uh, when, uh, like the Smith the name is there, so you will get all the entries with the Smith. So there are total 97 entries. So in order to operate the database, uh, we need to uh, learn the specific or the we, we should be familiar with the syntax, different SQL queries. Here we have selected name, album ID and the composer from the tracks table. But what is our filtering condition where composer like Smith order by album ID. So I have explained where and and like. There are other functions also. First, you get familiar with this and then you can go for the other SQL queries. Understood this? We are going slowly so that you will be able to get how to execute the queries. And this uh, software library is very easy. So uh, you can download it and uh, uh, you can explore the other options also. Okay, good, good. Elias, we will take the questions at the end. Fine. Let me explain a few more points and then we will have question and answers. So what we have discussed, uh, select we have discussed. Uh, we have discussed the uh, sorting that is order by, a distinct we have discussed and the filtering we have discussed. Now let me explain the next one. Group by. Group rows based on columns or the expression. So let's try to execute uh, this square. Again, uh, the first one select uh, start from uh, tracks. So it will give me all the entries for the tracks. So these are all the entries uh, which are in the tracks uh, table. Now here we are going to use the group by. So let's see how to execute the same.
okay what is our right uh, what is our condition here select album id then the count from the uh, tracks and group by album id so we are using here group by let's see what is the result we will get okay so uh, for the album id how many, uh, what is the count we have a uh, count of 10 for the album id 2 we have count of 1 only i will uh, try to explain one more time I miss one point let me explain this how the group by is useful let me explain okay now you just focus on track id and the album id so for the track id one uh, or the focus on the album id one uh, two three four five so how many one are there you will uh, like if we go manually it is uh, time consuming but if you use the group by you will get to know album id one what is the count that's what we are trying to uh, get using the group by. So let me run that group by query one more time. So you will see uh, with the album ID one, what is the count you will get? Okay, so album ID one, what is the count? We have a 10 count. Then for the second, it's one. For the three, it's a three. So this is the uh, use of a group by. Any doubt for the group by? So I have tried to share very simple SQL query. There are advanced also. But first, try to understand the basics one. Is there any doubt for uh, grouping data? Okay, let's uh, go for the next one. Okay, next one. Now, how to insert a default value? We will uh, use the command to insert a default, va a default value. But there is a one more challenge we have. How to verify that? Whether we have inserted a default value. Default value, that is a null value we are going to insert. So let me use the command. Uh, we will use the insert into uh, in order to insert a, a default value. And that default value is a null value. Let me first uh, write down the query. Okay. Insert into artist. We have a artist here. This is the artist uh, table, and we are going to insert a default value. If you execute this, nothing is displayed here. Then how to verify that uh, whether the default value is inserted or not? For that, we need to use the one more query. Let me explain this. We have uh, inserted a default value in the artist uh, column. So what we will do, select artist ID, name from the artist table and order by descending order. And if you execute this, here you will be able to see the null value. I have used this uh, previously also. That's the reason you are able to see the two null values. 277 and 276. Understood this? How to insert a null value and how to verify it. We have used order by artist ID in the descending order. Why descending order? Because it will show me the uh, recent one. Recent one which I have inserted the column. That is the artist ID 277. Understood this? Is there any doubt for this? Okay, now we have very basic queries. 
let me uh, explain this so there is a okay you want me to explain one more time no problem just a minute. i will just go back Okay, inserting default value. This is our SQL query in order to insert a default value. Where, where we are going to insert a default value in the artist table. Write a query, click on run. You will not able to see anything here. Then how we are going to verify whether the null value or the uh, row is inserted. So for that, uh, you need to again use one more uh, query or you need to run the query what is the query select artist id name from the artist order by artist id descent you just click on this now you will able to see the three null values because i have uh, run this uh, command uh, three times so previously it was 277 now it is a 278 Understood? Okay, good, good. Now, let's go for a few more basic SQL queries which are important. That is the average, count, maximum, minimum, and the sum. So, let's discuss this. Average, uh, average is going to help us uh, in order to, uh, uh, like in case of a tracks table, if you use the average, it will help us to get the average length of uh, tracks in the database. So what is the SQL uh, query or the command for that SQL average milliseconds from the tracks? So let me run this. Okay, now, now try to apply the concepts which we have learned or the points which we have discussed. What we are trying to do here, first select milliseconds, but before milliseconds, I put average. So it is going to give me the average value. If you don't, if you don't put the average, it will just give me the milliseconds from the tracks table. So let's try to execute this. So it will give me the average of millisecond for the uh, tra from the tracks table. Understood this? Then uh, let's run the next one. Now uh, you might have observed that there are different album IDs given. But I don't want the total average. I want the average for each album ID. Then what is the SQL command I can use? Select album ID, average millisecond from the tracks, group by album ID. So it will uh, uh, group uh, as per the album ID and it will show me the result. Again, I will explain. We are going to select album ID, average milliseconds, from the uh, tracks table uh, group by album ID. Let's try to execute this. Now you will see for each album ID, you will get the average. Album ID 1, 2, 3. Previously it was a total, but now we will get the uh, average for each album ID. Getting this point? These are simple functions, so uh, which are going to give us like uh, average, minimum, maximum. So we are trying to learn how to execute those in the uh, S squared. Let me share the next one. How to get the number of rows? If certain table is given, then how you are going to get the number of rows? You will use select count star from the tracks. So let me run this query. So there are total 3503 rows. Remember this?
So we will use the count star in order to get the number of rows for a table. Then let's discuss minimum and maximum value, how we can get the same. All these commands are executed for a single table so that you will not get confused. Okay, let me explain this first. We are going to select the album ID, but this time we are we want maximum bytes from the tracks. So what is our uh, SQL query? Select album ID, but uh, we want maximum bytes from the tracks. So let's execute this. So for the album ID 229, uh, we will get the maximum bytes. Similarly, uh, we can run this for the minimum bytes also. Or I, I will uh, share the different example. Max for maximum, MIN for uh, minimum. Select minimum uh, milliseconds. If you remove the minimum, you will get select milliseconds from the tracks. So select minimum milliseconds from the tracks. And you are going to run this query. So it is giving us the result. This is the minimum milliseconds. Understood this? So we are not going fast so that you will be able to get it. Any doubt uh, you understood this? There are a few more queries that uh, which I'm going to share. Okay. Then the next one. Next one. We have uh, that is the sum. If you want to get the sum of a certain column, then how we can get the same? You need to use SCM for sum. Select sum milliseconds from the crash. Let me execute this way. Just a minute. So what we are trying to do, uh, we are trying to get the sum for milliseconds. Select sum milliseconds from the tracks. AVG for average, MIN for minimum, MAX for max. And here we want sum, that's the reason we are using SVM. Let me run this. So you will get the sum of milliseconds. Good, good. Okay. Any doubt? Because these are very uh, basic uh, SQL queries. Average, count. For count, you are going to use count star. Maximum, minimum, and the sum. All these we have executed on a single table. That is a track. And one important thing, please ensure that the syntax is uh, correct. Otherwise, you will not get the uh, result. Like, uh, let's say if I put here comma, it will give me the error. So the syntax should be proper, but you need to remove it. Then only you will get the result. So these are the basic queries which you can practice initially. And once you understood this, you can go over the advanced. Okay, now let me explain the more what we have done for this session. Any doubt for the SQL queries? Okay, now let's focus on this. 
workflow in a data management and analysis what are the different uh, steps first one is the data collection we are going to collect the data there are different ways like uh, surveys there uh, or we will try to collect the data using the uh, different methods once the data collection is done data cleaning and the preparation for that we have uh, discussed excel in the excel uh, we can uh, remove the duplicates uh, we can use the uh, text to column uh, data sorting or the data validation why we are doing it why we are doing it because the data should be accurate then only we are going to store that data uh, in the sql database so after data cleaning and preparation it will be data storage sql and the no sql we are focus only on the sql in the sql the data will be stored in the form of tables that is a relational database then uh, comes the uh, data integration in the data integration in a simple way we can say that uh, the merging of the uh, two uh, tables or the merging of uh, two different files next portion is the data analysis for data analysis we are going to use the power bi tab which we are going to discuss in the tomorrow session so we are done with data collection data cleaning and preparation once the data is clean and prepared then we are going to store it in the uh, database and then the data analysis and data visualization for that uh, we have a power bi and a tab view and once the data visualization on reporting is done then it will be shared with the relevant stakeholder so they are going to take the decision they are going to implement the actionable insights and after implementation the last step will be monitoring and evaluation so this is the basic path from the data collection to the final process that is monitoring and evaluation and in this process we have focus on two important things that is excel and uh, sql and for sql i have not used my sql i uh, i have asked you to start with sqlite then you can go for my sql understood any doubts for this now the last one we have few questions and answers let's see how many of you are able to answer these questions okay the first one structured data typically requires which of the following for storage if you understood then you will able to answer okay go ahead a a very good it is a relational database in the relational database the data will be stored in the form of uh, tables rows and the columns very good that's the correct answer a is the correct answer okay let's go for the next one what is a common challenge when working with the unstructured data it can be hard to extract okay very good that's the correct answer meaningful information due to its lack of defined format because in the unstructured data uh, we will have images videos uh, audio files so it will be unstructured there will be uh, no organized form correct answer d is the correct answer good then uh which type of uh, which data type is more common in big data analytics okay that's a no a is not correct answer should be c because when we say big data in big data we have a structured unstructured and the semi structured data also yes answer is c C is the correct answer. Then, which of the following is an example of a structured data? A uh, tweet on Twitter, customer review, transaction uh, transaction record in bank's database, a video file. Okay, C. 
good that's a correct answer transaction record in bank's database b is not correct a customer review on website that is not a, a structured data c is the correct answer an example of transforming unstructured data into structured data is because we have discussed that 80% of information we can get from the unstructured data so it is important to get the actionable insight so what is the example where uh, unstructured data is transformed into structured data okay b good b is the correct answer an audio file of meeting uh, converting audio file of meeting into text and analyzing the uh, text for insights yes b is the correct answer good then i have a few more if you need to ensure that all entries in column are unique which excel feature uh, uh, should use b remove duplicates remove duplicates is going to eliminate the uh, duplicate entries good that's the correct answer when preparing data for analysis why might you use the data validation feature in excel why there is a need for uh, uh, using the data validation okay b b uh no d is not possible to find and highlight duplicate entries in your data set no that is not correct b is the correct answer a is also not correct data validation we are discussing data validation uh, it will help us to restrict the type of data or the values that users can enter into range of cells yes b is the correct answer you remember the scenario we have discussed the minimum value was 5 uh, and the maximum was 20 okay how you, how do you select all columns from a table named employees simple sql query question number 8 a yes good that's the correct answer select star from employees that's the correct answer a is the correct answer how do you select only the name and age columns from the users table uh b b you will get a syntax error a is the correct answer in the b parenthesis is given you will get a syntax error a is the correct answer select name age from the users yes a is the correct answer good then we have a last one which sql statement is used to add a new row to a table no c is not our correct one insert into yes yes that is the correct answer insert into the correct answer is insert into yes you remember the scenario we have inserted a null value and uh, we have verified that as okay good we are done with the uh, portion so in today's session uh, we have first understood like what are the uh, types of data the structured unstructured uh, then the time series semi structured and the big data then we have discussed how we are going to clean and prepare the data in excel once the data is clean and prepared we are going to upload it into the sql and uh, then we can access the data from the sql or we can run the different sql queries okay uh, let's go for questions go ahead apeksha what is your question please share we have apeksha and vikram
Uh, can you unmute uh, and then uh, share the question? Vikram, you're there? Amar, can you check the... Uh, uh, there are a few questions, but uh, yeah, sure. I think the is there. Uh, so participants, you have access to unmute yourself if you have any query or question. I think two participants have raised their hand, uh, Vikram and Apeksha. Amar, am I audible? Hello? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, dear professors, I just shared the attendance and feedback link in the chat box. So, please mark your attendance and share your feedback as well. And if you're facing any difficulty uh, regarding to the LMS or any query or question for me, please let me know in the chat box. Uh, so login credentials, you have to search from your side. So update the registration, the email ID, which you use at the time of registration and the password, you need to search from your side. For that, uh, we already shared the two mails. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. I will share the attendance link once again. Uh, please mark the attendance because sixty percent attendance is mandatory to get the certificate. Uh, yes, a picture A fifty. 
uh, you raise the hand you have any query or question APS you can unmute yourself okay if not then uh, uh, please lower your hand thank you I didn't receive could you please resend my mail ID so oh. Okay, so me here at the rate yahoo.com. Uh, when you are done with your registration, may I know the dates? Then, accordingly, I will uh, ask him. I didn't receive mail. Okay, so those who are done with their registration late, so probably today you will receive that. Oh, yes, the day one recording is already available there. So participant, if you know a uh, friend Sultan, yes. Uh, ma don't I didn't receive. receive. I didn't receive the mail, ma'am. Okay, so when you are done with your registration. Yesterday, first day. Yesterday, like in the first half or second half? Two o'clock, after two o'clock timing. Okay, yeah, sure. So don't need to worry. Today you will receive it, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. I have registered on last Friday. So you can check. We already given the LMS access, those who are registered on early basis. So you can check in the spam box as well. If not, then feel free to reach out to us at edl at the rate .com. Uh, I missed day one. How can I get the material? Material is already there for the LMS, so you can access that. Uh, today's file I will share with you. About time. Okay, yeah, sure. I will upload that as well. Okay. Yeah. So, Manoj, we do you have any question? Uh, sir, uh, the uh, session is very good, very uh, helpful and uh, very interactive. Yesterday also I uh, made a comment, today also second day. It's a very good session and a lot of inputs we are getting for uh, learning and proceeding ahead. Thank Thanks. you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, for today's attendance, sir, uh, when can the screen be shared? Uh, today attendance, I just shared the link in the chat box. So please check. Okay, okay. Fine, yeah. fine. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much, sir. sir. Can you please reshare the link? It's not visible. Oh, yes, I just reshared the link. I will share again in the chat box. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yes, tell me, Afreen. Ma, uh, sir, can you once again say how can, how we can access the LMS portal? Okay, ma'am. Actually, uh, be like uh, taking uh, LMS KT again, it will be problematic or it will be difficult. So you can just uh, drop me a WhatsApp message. I will help you on the same. So I'm okay, no, sharing my number? mobile number with you, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I will connect with you. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. Rajesh, sir.
or else uh, if anybody is facing any another query or any another question or any problem with the LMS, so I'm there in the WhatsApp group as well. So you can just uh, ping me over the WhatsApp. Sir, good evening, sir. Sir, uh, yes. uh, can you share? Uh, sir, can you share uh, your WhatsApp number here, sir, to get the access to LMS, sir? Okay, you are also for, facing. Sir. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else? Yes, uh, the class recording will be we will be getting in mail. Uh, the class recordings will be available over the LMS only, uh, day wise. Okay. Yeah. So good evening, sir. Yes, Pavitra very good evening. Uh, actually, the session was really helpful for us. And the one request is if they share the Excel sheet, uh, raw Excel sheet, so that we can uh, practice along with the while the presentation was going on. It will be yeah, more yeah. helpful for us. Okay. Before we'll having upload. to share the Excel sheets. So today also, sir was teaching well, but we couldn't practice ourselves along with sir. So okay. that is the one issue that we faced. Otherwise, uh, the session was really helpful for us. Okay, sure. Uh, we'll try to share the practice file over the LMS before the session. Thank you, sir. Actually, yesterday's also have not received. Uh, uh, yesterday, please, there is no in practice file as okay. uh, all covered over the PPT. So PPT is already there on the LMS map. Okay, sir. Fine. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so yesterday I attended full lecture but can't feel the attendance because of net issue. So dear iPhone user, uh, you have to mark your attendance because 60% uh, attendance is mandatory. So no need to worry if you uh, miss for one day, uh, you have four more days in your hand. So two day and three more days. So uh, without sir. forgetting, you can mark that. Sir. Uh, yes, Nehalma. Uh, I can uh, open your attendance form. You are not able to open the attendance form. Yeah. So you can just do one thing after clicking. If you are not able to revert there, then copy that message. If you are able to copy and paste it in the Chrome browser. Okay. Chrome browser. Chrome browser. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or else, uh, if uh, that link is not getting. Uh, yesterday, your... I forgot to uh, in the travel because of that. Uh, I can't uh, attend. I attended the ses yesterday session, but I can't. Um... Okay, you are not able to fill the form. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. If you miss for one day, that's okay. But uh, minimum, you have to mark attendance for three days. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. That is the uh, feedback form is nothing but attendance form. Yes, attendance absolutely form? right. It's common one. Okay, okay. Sir. Yeah. I sure. thought the attendance form is something else. Uh, uh, no, no, it's different. Uh, it, there is no any difference. The form is same only. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You're welcome, sir. Sir, it's not reload. Alright, sir. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So, uh, let's do one thing. I'm sending my mobile number with you. You can drop me a WhatsApp message. I will share over there as well. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I shared in the chat box. Okay. Are you conducting any exam for issuing certificate? So uh, there is no any such kind of examination or on examination, there is no any dependency of the certificates. It's uh, depend on the attendance only. Thank you, sir. I will contact to your number, sir. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, so I hope there is no such questions. So we'll wind up for the day. So dear participants, thank you so much for joining today's session. And we'll see you tomorrow at same time. So thank you and bye-bye.